So you got 12 of the first one, you got 12 of the second one, I got 12 of the rest of them. So this yeah. is literally wine for all sorts of people. Yeah, 100%. Every single one yeah. is a banger. Colour, complexion, style, and they're all really delicious. Though. G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People, Blind Wine Tasting. I am back in the studio. Big thank you to Laura and Gemma for stepping in on very short notice. I've been having a, been having a hell of a time with allergies, uh, to be honest, living on the farm. So right now, I'm hyped up on enough antihistamine to unalive an elephant. So we're going to be doing a bit of an experiment today to see whether or not that affects my taste. Uh, we have six wines of bubbly complexion. Big thank you to Different Drop for providing these. If you would like 10% off these wines, there is a link in the description below. But we're gonna taste through these, tell you how much we'd pay for them, how much we'd buy, and whether we even like them. We have six different sparkling wines made in six different ways. I don't know if there's actually six different ways to make sparkling wine, so that'll be kind of interesting to discuss. Anyway, let's get into it. Numero uno, very crystal clear. Absolute, like close to water, like pale lemon green, really. Prosecco or some, some pretty high-end like uh, champagne as well. Particularly, this smells more like a, like prosecco-y, fruity, vibrant-y sort of thing going on. Genuinely, I tend to like uh, prosecco more than champagne. Shock, I know, the guy likes cheap wine. Pretty soft, but easy drinking, not searing acidity. There is, I'm gonna say there's a bit of dosage here. It's not sweet, but it just doesn't feel like the acidity is as high as it could be if it was zero dosage. I mean, um, what we talk about in sparkling wine is what they call mousse, which is the kind of texture of the fizz. It's quite like broad and foamy, but the finish is quite short, but it's got really great acid. It's got a little bit of sweetness there to kind of balance that acid. But yeah, it's really playful, approachable. It's really easy drinking. Oh, that's fruity yum. Yeah, dude, that's grape juice. Um, that's really cool. Man, standing is a whole new dynamic to this. Look at front and center. Um, yeah, no, nah, I'm into it. I like this quite a bit. Uh, it'd go awesome with orange juice, I reckon. Look, the bead isn't that fine, but it's fun. I don't think this is sitting in the fine wine aspect of sparkling wines. I think this is in the fun wine aspect. I'd happily drop uh, like 20, honestly 20 bucks a bottle retail, and I would buy 12. This has been apparently this has been declared the summer of limoncello spritzes, so uh, this is definitely summer for that. I don't know why limoncello is popular now. I, I can't explain it, but it's popular. Wine number two. Let's see what we've got here. Again, going third in these sparklings is always such a stitch up. Because if I didn't know they were sparklings, I wouldn't guess they are based on that. That could just be a reason with a little bit of bubble in it, but we'll find out. There's a lot more um, uh, what we call autolytic character, so character from yeast cells. So this definitely moves me away from that sort of maybe forced carbonation. Could be Charmat, could be bottle ferment. Let's see. Strawberry, wild berry characters, kind of like underripe cherry, things like that, alongside those kind of more like riper lemon and like grapefruity citrus characters. Because it does have this sort of, every time I've had really nice champagne, I'm a little bit put off by how sort of like dry and cardboardy the front of the palate is. Uh, and I'd usually rather drink Prosecco. That said, that I'd rather put with orange juice. This is probably a more serious cracker. Much more drier, much more finer uh, mousse. The mouth, uh, really, really great length. It's actually really good wine. That's fantastic. That's absolutely delicious. Yeah, the the bead of the of the fizz and the mousse is absolutely on point. It's broad, it's creamy, and it's persistent. The acid is fantastic. All of those flavors of like those wild red berries are really, really driving home there. Yeah, I'm gonna go early with my champagne call because you only call it once with their six different ways, but I'll call that champagne. God, I'm glad that you guys can't see how I spell on these. Uh, and I'm gonna say that that is more expensive. That is a $79 bottle, and I'll have three of them. Three bottles of that will be plenty for me. Sorry, everybody, uh, for everyone at home. I'm going, I'm going Superman rather than Clark Kent. <laughs> My tastings just get really good. <laughs> Peaches, like, uh, Bowser sitting at the piano like peaches, 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 peaches. That's what I'm mainly getting from that. But like with Jack Black's voice instead of mine, so it actually tastes better. It is a little bit natty as well. Like, I don't know if natty is the right word, but it's starting to just go off a little bit. I'd imagine that this is probably a lot tastier about 20 minutes ago. Something tells me this is not champagne. Something tells me this has come from, it could be like French, it quarter. It has a really amazing sort of, oxidative um, uh, uh, to form to the attack on the palate. 
It's got some texture to it as well. It's got a lot of Lee's work there going on too. Out kind of more in that kind of cranberry red fruit than it is on that strawberry end. So it doesn't remind me of like Pinot Noir style sparkling too much. Woo! It's like a fruit tingle. I like that. Yeah, like a little bit confected, a little bit sweet. I think I need to trim my moustache more. I'm struggling to smell wine over the top of it, which is a slight problem, but cross that bridge. Interesting sometimes can be almost like um, too overbearing over a period of time. I don't need too much interesting in my life. Interesting in, in small proportions keeps things interesting. I've lost the plot. It's the antihistamines. Number four. Now, are definitely in that deeper gold category and the bubbles are really persisting here very, very well. You can see these like little lines popping and like, you know, persisting in the glass. Like these like great rows of fizz kind of going up and up and up. And I'm the second person tasting after Brendan. So this has been, this clearly has got some good fizz going on. One of these is gonna have to have been a pet nap. I reckon it might be this one. Pet nap, the... Oh, far out. I know what the abbreviation's for, but it's like Petulilli Naturale, but it's not that petulant. No, petulant's what I was as a child. I can't think of what it is. And then we move on to more what we call Method Traditionnel, Method Champagne was, see out of Champagne, where we get a lot more finer feed uh, from it. So often that can be the little telltale sign. Awesome. Awesome. Aldehydic, lifted, rich, a lot of, um, you know, nice uh, yeast, autolysis, which is the bready brioche, and that aldehyde, when I say aldehyde, it might not be what you're thinking, which could be like formaldehyde. It's not like that. Aldehyde is in like bruised apple. It's good. It's good. There's no doubt about it that it's a good, but it's not, like when I looked at it, I was like, hell yeah, we're on. I don't think it necessarily backs up what I'm seeing. Uh, again, the, the, the carbonation is perfect, so like the method of production is fantastic. Yeah, natural, but like, what's the P? Petulant? Nah, it's not petulant, bro, that's a different word. Lockie trying to give me advice out here. Promiscuous naturale, as they call it in Italy. It's delicious, but it does go off pretty quickly. Uh, happily drop around about uh, $75 a bottle. Ah, nah, nah, nah. $85 a bottle, and I'm gonna buy 12. I think that's all class. <laughs> Wine number five, sparkling red baby. I don't know why, but I don't know if this is like, comment below if this is, A, if you're in Australia. All right, now we're getting into the weird ones. Weird ones, sparkling red. It's a rare thing, it does happen uh, overseas. It's rare, um, but more commonly, we're in Australia. I'm gonna take a random stab that. This is probably Australian. It is very much a South Australian thing. That is sparkling Shiraz. We win. It's got a, it smells like sunscreen. It's got sunscreen smell. But look, this is an iconic wine of Australia. It's a quirk in the world of wine. Uh, and it is something that I consumed a few bottles of over the last month or so because it is sparkling Shiraz at Christmas. Oh, I love sparkling red so much. It does give me the worst hangovers, but it is so delicious. If you haven't had a sparkling red before, do yourself a favor, give it a whirl. You'll either love it or you hate it, but if you come down on the fence that's on the, come down on the side of the fence that says you love it, oh, it's a good time. No, this is good. This smells almost dusty, almost Italian. Oh man, what a change in pace, what a change in gears. That's a luscious, luscious. I think a lot of people see sparkling wine as a type of wine and wine style that is uh, like refreshing and tart and bright and fun. And we see all this sort of hyperbole around the sparkling wine category. I mean, this is the antichrist of that. <laughs> like, this is total antithesis. I've told this story before on the, po uh, not on the podcast, on the show before. I've told this story before. I was actually conceived because of sparkling Shiraz. Uh, my parents told me that one Christmas when we'd had a couple and they were like, you should thank Rumbles for you existing. I'm like, what are you talking about? It was a New Year's Eve party in 1994. That's why I'm here. Anyway, sparkling Shiraz, like you a lot. Number six looks like Pet Nat because it's hazy, light pink and foamy, um, which indicates deliciousness most, most of the time. Um, also wildness, which is kind of what I'm looking for. Woo! It smells like strawberries. It looks like strawberries. It smells like strawberries. Does it taste like strawberries? Wow. Um, delicious, great, great, uh, clean, crisp, um, almost like uh, peach fuzz back palate. That's great. Foamy as hell mousse. It's like being stuffed under the water at the beach, but they're broad and foamy. Love the flavor. It's got this like lovely sour cherry tang. Super juicy like peaches, red currants. 
uh, red cherry, like raspberry, extremely delicious. Absolutely love this. Like, you know, technically, if you're looking at like sparkling wine production, it's not made very well, but it's fucking yummy. I would pay $38 a bottle, magic number on this one, uh, and I would totally buy 12. I think it's really, really, really well made. Uh, I would want to consume it kind of quickly. I don't know, like fake carb carbonation. I don't know how much alcohol is in there. It could be like a peak I don't know. It's really sour cherry, but it could be peak hair. Because it doesn't, it feels watery, you know? Like it feels super dry. God, that's easy to drink. It tastes like sort of wheat cordial, which like I'm into. I would have loved to taste it fresh. I wonder, oh, it's gotta be completely different. Cause I'm not too sure how long this bead feels like it's actually dispersed itself really quickly. So I'll finish up to get the other guy into, guys into taste. But um, yeah, bought a lot of wine for my first time back. Might be indicative of something. Maybe I need it. Anyway, let's see how the guys go. All right, we are back. We have six amazing sparkling wines. I love bubbly. How did you guys find it? Uh, I had peaks and valleys, but I, I also love bubbly. Uh, but there were some absolute stars and then some wines that I was like, yeah, it's cool, but not for me. Mm. Turns out I love bubbly so much that I love bubbly that even isn't bubbly anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went third yeah. here, but I there ended up a buying a, a lot of wine still. All right, well, focusing on wine number one, which I think is the, the simplest of the lot. Yep. A um, lot of fun. I bought 12, loved it. I bought half a dozen. I really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I just don't need 12, but I, I need half a dozen. Yeah, I, I need half a dozen as well because it's the perfect sort of take a six pack away for Christmas time. Someone's mm. going to get orange juice put in it. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's it is go. spritz. It, yeah. is, it just reads spritz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like, fuck it, I want other shit in this. This is nice, but it could be better. Yeah, mm. like what if we just. Strawberry on the side of the glass, forget about it. Oh, like Aperol, Aperol like spritz. the whole thing. Stuff. Like, that's yeah. the shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Lemon cello, everyone's doing Over lemon cello at the minute. Well, like something just oh, yeah. simple as like a bit of a palate cleanser. Mm. Um, it, this was six sparkling wines done in six different ways, and yeah. you just passed your sparkling component of the diploma. Let's pause over that I found it tasting. <laughs> nah, <laughs> don't worry. It gets yeah. aggregates so <laughs> fast, anyways. Um, but what, what do you reckon that is? Uh, that is. I reckon that is the uh, the prosecco method. I reckon mm. that's the Charmat. Yeah, so big but, tank, not in bottle. That's what I said. Yeah. Hell yeah! That's right yeah. Well. I could fail the Westset tasting <laughs> session as well. <laughs> uh, I was willing to pay 20 bucks a bottle. Uh, I was kind of the exact same thing, but uh, I adjusted for inflation, so I wanted, I'm happy to pay 25 for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I only want half a dozen. And I adjusted for 2024 inflation and said it was $40 a bottle. <laughs> 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 yeah, now yours is much more reasonable. It shouldn't cost 40 bucks. Lucky? Hey! Oh, it's the difference. Bargain. <laughs> <laughs> But is that Prosecco at 22? It's actually also very impressive because the Prosecco prices have actually gone up quite a bit. Yeah, well, luckily from the Alpine Mountains, it's already, so we're getting good deal. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, Joe Marsh. Billy Button, yeah. Joe Marsh, uh, great winemaker, um, always working with alternative varieties and always at great prices too. Mm -hmm. um, we've mm. had bargains from her on the show before. No bucks. exception. No, yeah. bang. Bang. Like 22 bucks. <laughs> 22 <laughs> bucks. Yeah, for sure. I was going to pay 40. <laughs> it must, must be nice. Things started to ramp up though. It actually yeah. ramped up pretty quick. I was pretty impressed with uh, where this went. Yeah, 100% wider line up for me. Wider yeah. line up for me, 100%. This was banging. <laughs> yeah, this is cracker. <laughs> New year, same shit, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I was just like, I reckon this is the champagne out of a lot of them because it's yep. got that uh, sort of like dry, bready cardboard thing on the front of the palette, which I don't like, but everyone seems to love. So I'll have three bottles of it and it's going to cost 80 bucks. <laughs> I, I had it actually pegged as a method traditionnel, so like bottle, yep. bottle ferment, mm -hmm. um, but Aussie or a New World. Uh, I yep. don't think it had that sort of like fruit weight that I'd typically see at a New World. Um, happy to be wrong, but I wanted, I was hopeful to pay 45 bucks a bottle and I wanted 12. Wait, we're saying traditional hopeful. Do you think that was a pet nut? Is that what meant No, it's meant no. ancestral. Mm. Yeah. yeah, even more traditional than traditional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Nothing in the wine industry makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Until it does. 80 bucks, oh. three bottles. The acidity of that, like, just feels so champagne. It is like, it is green and tart and racy. Mm. And it's just like really underripe strawberry characters that I just thought it had to Yum. be like mm. Pinot Noir champagne, mm. like, mm. or like mm. a red variety champagne. Mm -hmm. um, I was hoping to pay $90. So sub 100 for champagne right now is great. Um, and I was getting a dozen. What do we got? Fuck, on! On it. On, who's making on this? It. Who is making That'd this? That'll be a dowser. That'll be a... Over here. Over here. Nice. Yeah. 
fucking exceptional. Why is that? <laughs> Funny yeah, enough, it's called exceptional. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my favourite uh, Australian producers flies under the radar, I think, um, uh, to be honest. Like, it is, it is pretty well sort of uh, noted, because I guess you don't really hear it mentioned. No. Like, I, I, often. I think you look at that, that is like very traditional branding. <laughs> that is like <laughs> old school, like 80s, like very champagne orientated. And like, there's other brands that are probably more marketed better from Tasmania, mm. like Jans, Aras, things like that. So yeah, they kind of do sneak under that like second rung. Mm. Um, but 45 bucks, that's a ripper. I reckon this year I'm going to drink heaps more Tasmanian wines. They've had the oh. AFL team announced. I reckon it's the year of Tassie. Tasmanian wines in for 2024. Do they know the name of the AFL team? They're, they're trying to make it the Devils, but they're in a legal dispute with, with Warner, Warner Brothers. Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Warner Brothers should totally just sponsor the team. Yeah. Um, I agree. <laughs> anyway, this was not what I expected it to be. I flipped and backed and forthed and don't know where we at with this. What is this? I have no idea what this is. It tastes uh, like fucking dragon fruit. Like it is so <laughs> weird. Like, I don't know. I I was kind of like, I just wanted a bottle of it because it's so weird. Um, I had, I, I like my immediate thought was I thought you'd fucking really be into this because it's like so aromatic and tropical and fun. But I'm just like, I, it's, it's kind of in a halfway house for me with like sparkling wines. I either want it to be that and like mm. wacko mm. or like really like traditional. And this kind of sits in the halfway house and it just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, so that's why I wanted a dozen of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally, I was like, all right, so that's Prosecco. This is champagne. What's the other type of spot? Oh, it's Passion Pop. But it's not Passion Pop, obviously. But like, it does have that weird like fruity, just like what the hell are we drinking here? So I was, I, Passion Pop S, 38 bucks, give me a dozen. I thought like, I find it hard pressed that, that to not come out of Europe. Yeah, I think it's like, Potentially something Spanish, Southern Italian, hmm. maybe something like a sparkling Vouvre. I, I that was some significant age. Yeah, I was like thinking like uh, yeah, or even like because of the color, I was like kind of like sh like a sparkling uh, Cab Franc, mm. like made mm. in the traditional mm. style. But I don't mm. fucking know. It's weird as. I love that smell though. It bangs, dude. I it's love that. So cool. it, it, it smells so wacky. Yeah. It's just like, it smells like fucking rambutan. It, it is does. wacko. <laughs> well, I wanted to drop 60 bucks. I thought it was worth more than, than wine number two. I only wanted six because I think interesting can be a bit overpowering sometimes. Yeah, I only wanted one bottle just because it's so fucking left of field. Uh, and I, I 38 bucks. Uh, yeah, 38. Give me a does. Oh my god! <laughs> What do you mean? What is that? That is so cool. What is it? So it's uh, it's, it's what do you mean? It's gr it's grower champagne imported by Jim Barry. Um, uh, no way. Ex extra brut, two grams a liter of sugar. It's all like it's sixty five percent Pinot, uh, and it's aged in oak. So. I'll just kind of say this as well, because there, when people get bonkers of a grower champagne, it's actually the, all the reasons that we've literally just said. This is so unique. This is so yeah. wild. Like, it's really hard to compare this against, say, this, which is actually made using the same method, and actually looks like champagne, like like a larger house champagne. That's why grower champagne is a thing. That's yeah. why Recolton Manipulant is a thing, is that it can look like something that is, like, not from this planet. Dude, that bangs. That's so amazing. amazing. So what like, I've noticed on here... So was... he's actually chosen, like, the Ritzy's wine as wine lineup. It's amazing. Oh, I've got several wine of the lineups coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I... Dude, you bought straight... Oh, no, you almost bought straight 12. Yeah, the one that we yeah. really liked. Yeah, I love it. This pretty much moved up time. I'm pretty confident. This was my wine lineup. Really? Yeah, I really love this. I like this a lot as well. I thought this was a Pinot, like a Pinot Noir um, uh, Chardonnay, uh, Pinot, Pinot Noir Chardonnay, Pinot Noir Champagne. Oh, it's a Blanc de Noir. Love the structure. Um, I, all about it. All I, about. I didn't get any Pinot from it. Um, I, I like, I get that pineapple thing, which I get from like mm. Chardonnay dominant mm. uh, sparklings, but. I didn't know, I just, like, I didn't like the kind of more, um, which is weird for me, but I didn't like the kind of more almondy, nutty aspects. When I want this style one, I want it to be a bit more, like, brioche-y. God, mm. that smells you like almond I mean? meal on the nose. Oh, my mm. God. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's literally almond meal. Like, I love that in still white wines, but in this, I literally want it to taste like a fucking buttered bun. That's, That's really what I want. Still now, brother. So we've gone from, like, Charmat as a method. Yeah. Okay, we've gone to method traditionnel. We've gone for a derivation, really, of method yeah. traditionnel and, and yeah, halfway ancestral. house. Uh, I. What do you reckon we are here? I called this. I called this Carver method. If this is fucking good, Carver, this is Carver. 
I because it was the flattest of the bunch of them that I tried, I was mm -hmm. like, what goes flat really quickly and kind of tastes a little bit interesting? I went method ancestral, I believe the kids are calling it these days, or pet nap, but it's definitely not. Yeah, no, I I think it probably looks like it actually ha it feels like carver. This could be some really it's fucking high end carver, which I've never had before. So it generally tastes like a black tire. Lucky. Yeah, it's not pet nap, is cool. it? It's a, it's it's a definitely premium pet nap. Premium pet nap. Yummy, yummy. Vermont from Jura. Blanc Brut Nature. Nature, so it's all it's all Chardonnay. Um, so yeah, Brut Nature is probably it. So there's like zero dosage. Good. Like it's, yeah. it's pure, just like vinified grapes. That's wacko. And it's Cremont. Cremont. Which I thought is made the same way as it is true, um, it is like true. Method traditional. It is true for method, but I think it's the difference is Brut Nature. Yeah, okay, so I we're talking that, about like a bone dry. Yeah, I think that is the, the different style. Um, but yeah, for, for 50 bucks though, like for sparkle, the sparkling wine, uh, Brut Nature from uh, France, that's pretty amazing. I thought it was a Blanc de Noir champagne. Yeah. And I was happy to pay that price. You could totally fool me. Uh, and I'd be stoked. I prefer still. I, I prefer still. I prefer still. Still, still, still Jura. Still mm. Jura. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Merry <laughs> Christmas to me. What are you talking Happy about? Happy New Year. Yeah, after the worst call I've made on this show in a few years, calling that thing Pet Nap, we are back with some sparkling <laughs> Shiraz, baby. Hell yeah, dude. That was, it was really, I was really impressed with it. I actually dude, thought it was It's actually right. really good. What do you mean, actually? Sparkling Red's awesome. Yeah. But we did do yeah. a Sparkling Red. Remember we did Sparkling Red a couple of years back? Sure, And dude. it was quite varying. It yeah. almost Extremely. looked like a lot of the, it really depended on the, the quality of the base wine. Yeah. And the base wine quality here is elite. Totally different experience to these wines though. Like this is like a warm hug. Yeah. Mm. You know, and, and the mousse and the car, like carbonic acid sort of like really kind of makes you feel that. That's like, it's so blue fruited and pretty mm. and oh, mm. so good. Yeah. Mm. I want a glass. Because <laughs> I only want one glass on Christmas day and that's kind of it. And then I'm done and I want to move on to fucking the, the other shit. See, look, you're absolutely right. But <laughs> <laughs> the reason I know that I should only drink a glass of this is because the amount of hangovers that I've had. Oh, from this dude, shit. the sparkling red hangover is the most heinous of them all. That said, mm. the fifth mm. glass of sparkling red is always a good idea at the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's awesome. I love it so much. So I got a dozen of it. I said it was Blaise Dale sparkling Shiraz, and I wanted to pay forty-five bucks a bottle for it. Uh, I also want to pay 45. Similar to Noah's thing, my oh. bottles is not indicative of how much I actually love it. I really do love it. Uh, I wanted three bottles, I wanted to pay 50. Yep. Same thing, it was like depths of winter, Boxing Day, Christmas yeah. Day. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's it for me. Week. <laughs> Week. This is all year Let's round, bro. That's my other shout for 2024. Sparkling all year round. All right. It should be drunk in winter, to be honest. Where are we, though, in price point? Oh, oh my god! god. Yeah, Give me two talking. dozen. No, it's only it's 11 amazing. months too early. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing price, though, for that quality wine. What have we got? What do you say? Sparkling Shiraz! Give me that shit! We back 2024! Oh! Oh! Dude, from Pet Nat, calling that Pet Nat to calling the Bleasdale wine on there? Are you kidding me? No, no, he's done <laughs> Give me that shit. Mmm. Mmm. It feels good to be king. It's the new studio, dude. I'm so sorry. Woo! <laughs> this is why I love that shit. I told you the story last time. I, I exist because of sparkling shows. My parents got drunk on it at New Year's Eve, and here I am 28 it's in the years DNA. later. Yeah, it's, it's that's, that's in it. The that's, it's the DNA. It's got last wine of the lineup. Totally pet nat. Loved it. Rare for it. Loved Big it. fan of it too. One so 12, good. 12. 38 dollars yep. magic. Yeah, 28. Number. 38 bucks. 100 percent. Uh, I liked it a lot. I thought it tasted like strawberry water, uh, and I'm shocked it doesn't taste funkier given that you guys think it's yeah, bad. fucking like red. Like, yeah, you got sparkly shreds everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look like the scene from like um, the Return of the King where he's just eating grapes. I look like a, I was <laughs> gonna say 28 days later. But that's cool. <laughs> you know when a lion gets a kill and they come back all bloody, they deserve that shit, and I deserve to look like this right now. Please, they are sparkling yeah. I don't care what Yeah, but they mean a lion in the wild, not the lion from uh, yeah. <laughs> fucking... Uh, Wizard of Oz. Thank you, <laughs> god damn it, god damn it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't care what this is because of that, but I still loved it. 12 bottles, 32 bottles. I thought it was a skinsy white, actually. I thought oh, there was a bit I, of skinsy. Like thing. Pinot Gris? Mm -hmm. Honestly, mm. I didn't I, know you could make skinsy whites that colour. Yeah, yeah, neither. Pinot Gris. Neither, but it smells like lanolin-y. It feels like yeah. it's, there's like a, been a bit of skinsy there. But, big fan, uh, 38 and 12. I almost thought it was Pinket. 
mm. because like it's mm. really thin and watery. Mm. No, that's not a that's not a comment on its quality. No. That's a com like that's a comment on yeah. how much I want to drink it rapidly. But it's really it's really thin and lean. I can't really taste too much booze. I don't know. Could be on a good shout there. I, 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 I'm just like the real, real just like there. you know from 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 half court, just like really like lobbing it from the back of the head there. Oh, no, but no, I'm no, having no. a crack. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, uh, 32 and 12, yes, 38 sure. and 12. Clean sweep. Clean sweep? Ooh, what do we got? Hey! Again. <laughs> we know wine economics so good. <laughs> right now, hey, right now right. Yes, the other right. Method uh, of ancestral. So mm -hmm. is Petna. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's... And Alex Shulkin is one of the OGs, really, of, of this doll. He's been championing uh, Pet Nat for a very, very, very long uh, time uh, in Australia. Uh, Adelaide Hills, he does a myriad of different uh, pet nuts, and this is probably one of the best looking ones I've Dude, tried. This, this, is this is really, really good. Big pet nut needs to get behind this because if this is the first sort of pet nut that people try, people will want to try more. Whereas there are some pet nuts that if it's the first you try, yeah, you ain't gonna try anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Big pet nat, get behind it. Actually, yeah, it's probably no. still a little pet nat, to be honest. It's a small thing. But... Yeah, how do you not want to drink shitloads of this? Yeah, that's how the, do you it goes not down want way to drink too easy. Of this? So go, wait, hang on. So, too busy so drinking how, please, Del, I gotta, I gotta ask though. Like, there's only this much left in the glass, yeah. and I only had a sip of this. How I had down like four glugs. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky's gone. <laughs> Lucky's gone. Oh, like, behind the camera. How does, how does, how does this? Oh yeah. Wait. What's going on there? How does this? Ah, oh, okay, okay. We had an expl we had a pet nat explosion. This is part of the okay. This is also part of it. We lost half of it we because lost. of fizz. Yes, because you opened it at room temperature. Uh, because when pet nats opened at room temperature, it explodes. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Uh, so like uh, Wine a lineup. We got a clean sweep on that pet nat. Yeah. I honestly think it's this. Dude, that thing bops. Yeah, it's a clean sweep. Yeah. It's very, undeniable. very impressive. All of these were exceptional. There was not a single bottle here that I would, I would not gladly want to consume. Did you get twelve of the first one? I, I, had, I had six of the first one. So you no. got twelve of the first one. You got twelve of the second one. I got twelve of the rest of them. So this yeah. is literally wine for all sorts of people. Yeah, hundred percent. Every single one yeah. is a banger. Color, complexion, style, and they're all really delicious. Yeah. Uh, and they could have gone. That's that. That was the most interesting one. The, oh, it's uh, fucking wacko! My, yeah, my yeah, only yeah, note was question mark. What the hell is that? that? It costs yeah. 140 bucks. From also, a technical standpoint, right through to a total beginner standpoint, that's wild. But that is delicious. Also, yeah. also, do you remember? When I called police to sparkling Shiraz, <laughs> let's go. See you next time. We are on. <laughs>